God of heaven, we thank you today. We thank you for your loving kindness, for your tender mercy. Thank you for your presence that's in this place. God, we pray that, Lord, you will send your word. We need to hear a word from you, God. Lord, these are your people, the sheep of your pastor. Touch this house even the more. God, we thank you for the things that you've done. Thank you for the things that you're about to do. God, we give you glory. Lord, there's none like you anywhere. We exalt your name. In spite of all of the rain, in spite of all of the floods, you're yet God. And we thank you right now. You're yet in control. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Oh, we exalt your name tonight. Glory. There's none like you. Now, God, we pray that you would strengthen us to give you the word, to give your people the word of God. We thank you right now. Thank God. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Oh, come on. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Come on, the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's in this place. Come on, the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can take your seat. Certainly, we honor the Lord on tonight, and we certainly give honor to all of the people of God. Certainly, we honor the pulpit on tonight. We give honor to Elder Downs, to Minister Timothy Lane, to Minister Mack. And I, I just got to say this, you know, um, Sister Lane, I, I just get a smile when I see Minister Timothy Lane. I, I, you know, I just get a smile because I just kind of remember when and just to look at him, I, I'm not saying he's been a wild young man. He's never have to me, you know, but, but I can see, can, I can see the growth that God has put in his life. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm saying it. Amen. And, and the thing that I love about him, I look at the humbleness of his spirit. I was telling some people that when he came and spoke for us, um, and he just did a mini message. Uh, it was for the youth service. I think it was AIM. And um, he came to me, he said, Sister Chancellor, he said, they, they don't know me. He said, how did I get up there? I said, they may not know you, but God knows you. How many know God will elevate you? God will put you in. Oh, yeah, I know I'm saying something. This, I'm already in the message. But God will elevate you when you begin to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And certainly, God is going to do great things. Certainly, Sister Lane, I just admire you. I love you dearly. Amen. Been praying for you. Amen. Amen. Been praying for the Peters Rock family, and I'm just trying to get my bearings. This is a little uncomfortable to me at the moment. Y'all understand. But God is doing a great work here. Amen. Amen. And I don't, I don't expect to see nothing less. Come on, somebody. Because of the fact that there was a great shepherd here, and he was a servant leader. He wasn't just a leader, but he was a servant leader. <laughs> I, and, and when I begin to, to really deal with this message, I'm going to deal with the theme. But when I begin to really deal with this, I was like, Lord, is that what you want me to go in there and, and, and talk about? And I'm going to tell you, the Lord told me to talk about service because of the fact, this is what he told me. He said, everything reproduces after its own kind. That's just the way it is. And see, what we've got to understand, see, I know it's from the pits of hell when they want to take a gene or chromosomes of a, of a goat and mix it with a cow. Come on, somebody. That's against the law of God. God put it and he ordained it where everything will reproduce after his own kind. When, when All the way back to the days of, of Noah, he did not put a goat with a cow. He told him, he said, Noah, line them up two by two, male and female, the same species. Y'all better read your Bible. Come on, somebody. He didn't even line them up two males or two females, but it was male and female. So we've got to understand that, that everything reproduces after its own kind. And I know for a fact that God is reproducing some servants in this house. That's all I came to tell you. And there's a blessing. There is a blessing in being a servant. Now that is a spirit 
that is contrary to what the world has put out. Now, the Bible puts it this way. It said that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And if you read the scenario of the different types of spirits that's going to be in this last day, it says heady and high-minded. Come on, somebody. So that's anti-God. Spirits that is totally against the law of what God has set up. There is no way that you can be a saved person and not be a servant. I, I didn't expect to get a lot of amens today. I really don't. But, but Brother Greg, he summed it up for me. He said, I am a servant, and that's what we're dealing with. That really is the subject today. I am a servant. Now, I'm not going off, and y'all been knowing me too long, but I say what God tell me to say. Now, the theme says, ready and willing to serve, right? Do I have it right? Ready, and you tell me if I'm wrong. All right. Ready and willing to serve. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not tearing down the theme, but I want to show you something. You can be ready and willing to serve and not be a servant. Uh, you said that that is totally contrary. Well, let's go to the book of Second. Let's go to Philippians. I want to talk to you a minute. I ain't gonna be long. S Philippians, the second chapter, and the sixth verse. And I'll say it again: You can be ready and willing to serve and not. Be a servant. See, we use things so carelessly sometimes because people really, in the church, most people make themselves servants. People say to me, girl, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a servant of the Lord. But you can't, they just as contrary. See, see, let me, let me explain what I'm, where I'm going. When you say that you are ready and willing to serve, that means you choose who you going to serve, where you going to serve, and how you going to serve. Oh, God, help me in this place. But when you are a servant of the Lord, you have no choice in the matter. <laughs> and he usually has you serve in the area you don't want to serve in. Oh, come on, somebody. The Bible puts it this way. You are bought with a price. You are no longer your own. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. You don't have a choice in this matter. Ooh, God, help me here. Well, what are you trying to tell me? That I'm a glorified servant, a glorified slave? That's what I'm telling you. Oh, God, help me here. So, uh, uh, come on, y'all, because as the people of God, first thing we say, I ain't nobody slave. Oh, God, help me. I'm messing up, I know. But, but, but I, I want to show you why I'm saying what I'm saying. My great aunt used to always say, now everybody was little girl. Little girl, when you speak, come from the book. So I'm coming from the book. Philippians, the second chapter, and the sixth verse, it says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Once you take on salvation, you supposed to take on the form of Jesus, right? Even the scripture said, let Christ be formed in you. And the form that Christ took on was the form of a servant. God help me here. He did not compromise his deity as God. He was still God. Because some folks, they want to say, well, he emptied out of himself. And he did that. But he did not empty out and take sin and become sin. I'm talking about where he practiced sin. 
He took on the sins of the world. Yes, but the Bible said we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but we're at all points tempted as we yet without sin. He didn't compromise his deity. But it says he took upon him no reputation. When you are a servant, oh, God, help me here. It's not about your title. Jesus had the utmost title. In it. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. But that's not the way that he came. He came in the form of a servant. Good God, we're going to see if we're going to say after all this, I'm a servant. Some of y'all ain't going to say nothing. And it's going to be all right because I'm going to have an altar after this. So then you can repent and get it right. 